Hounicon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Hounicon Podcast, highlighting Citizen Potawatomi Nation issues, members, and more. Please subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Hounicon Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Paige Willett. During this episode, we'll learn the basics of hand games played every year at Family Reunion Festival, practice with CPN's Women's Drum Group, and meet the 2019 Potawatomi Leadership Program class. Each summer at CPN's Family Reunion Festival, attendees anticipate hand games almost as much as the powwow. It's a Native American and Potawatomi tradition that goes back generations. The tribe started hosting the event decades ago, and it turned into the highlight of Friday night, a festival weekend. Hand games involves the entire nation with employees organizing and judging. The event kicks off with Chairman John Rocky Barrett, auctioning teams, and a group of men plays the drum. More than 100 tribal members competed in 2019. Jonathan Toon participated with his family in the past, but this year, his fellow Potawatomi Leadership Program class members comprised his team. Um, it's just competing against with your family and then other people that you know very well or people that you meet at the festival. It just makes it interesting because they don't get mad at each other, they just take it all for fun. Indigenous people have played hand games for centuries, both for fun and sometimes with more at stake. Each year at the Citizen Potawatomi Nation Family Reunion Festival, the tribe proudly continues the tradition. The hand game at festival is based off something sometimes known as stick games. The Citizen Potawatomi rules differentiate it from other hand games, such as bowl and dice and shell games. Longtime hand game participant Margaret Zintek breaks them down. The way we play it, you're going to have seven players. One of those will be a captain. They'll choose a picker and they'll choose two hiders. You go up against a team of seven, so you'll take turns back and forth. The two hiders each hold a colored bead that they can pass back and forth between their hands behind their backs. They try to distract the picker from choosing the correct hand. Many times they dance and move along with the loud social songs coming from the men's drum group that plays during the competition, which can last for several hours. Team strategies and antics have even changed the rules. They have, over the years, learned to put circles on the ground because, you know, some of us don't stand very good. Um, and we're supposed to stay in the circle. We can do a lot of things, but we have to stay in the circle. And that means if you're dancing, if you're doing the jump around, if you're hiding, you can do it all. After the judge calls for hands forward, the hiders bring them in front of the picker while they use a stick to indicate one of four guesses, the left hands, the right hands, the inside hands or the outside hands. If they pick correctly, they get a point. If they don't pick correctly, it changes hands, the other team gets to try. You only get a point when you're picking. So like volleyball, you're serving, you get a point. That's how it works here. Judges hold an integral part of the match, making sure all participants play fairly, as well as acting as a mediator for any disagreements. Zintek takes their position seriously. Judges always rule, whatever they call. Greg Cox is the player development manager for the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort. He judged his first hand games competition more than five years ago. Although he is not a tribal member, the game remains special to him after Chairman Barrett asked him to help. This is one of my exciting things I do all year. I mean, the chairman truly loves this event, and anything I can do to give back to the tribe I want to and the thing is it's the simplest game in the world but it's so competitive and I love that I'm a super competitive person so that's why I kind of go overboard on saying point and winner and because I make it as big of an as you can. Putting money at stake makes the competition fierce. Before the drumming starts, the tribe holds a Calcutta-style auction. Teams are bid on one at a time. Bidding is open and in random order. Teams are allowed to bid on themselves. Zintek brings her money to bid. 
Hunt, if a team were to buy themselves and they win the hand games, then they get the entire pot of the Calcutta, which gets pretty pricey and can actually exceed the hand game winnings. If they, if you have somebody else buy it, then they split. The person who bought gets most of it, but the hand game team gets some. And they usually put money on the drum for sticking with them all night. Tribal member Donnie Bruno is known for being very involved in the auction. His reasons for enjoying it are simple. For the money, for the fun. It is exciting. It's been going on a long time. And uh, I usually buy several teams each year. One year I had the three of the last four people. I barely did win, though. <laughs> Zintek has had her share of close calls, too. Our team has won, and we have gotten to the finals and lost by a point twice. So either let me get all the way to the end or not. You'll see teams that come with their own t-shirts They have you, that they make sure all their people are dressed. You'll see family teams. You'll see makeup teams on the spot. Right now, Eva Marie's Carney's walking around giving everybody a, a cap for her team. Carney is the District 2 legislative representative for CPN, which includes much of the East Coast and South. Going above and beyond for hand games, she purchased blue ball caps that said District 2 for her teams to wear. Four of the 15 teams participating come from Kearney's district. Um, I don't know. A lot of people like my hats, I believe. <laughs> there's one family. There are two um, almost complete families on two teams. So there's two family teams, and then there's another full team of just District 2 folks. And then there's yet a fourth team that's mostly those same District 2 folks. <laughs> See, if you look, it's a sea of blue. In fact, she doesn't have enough hats for everyone. Teams knock each other out one by one as they advance to the next round. The roundhouse gets loud as people yell and cheer each other on, the drum kicks, and the competition heats up. Jonathan has watched Zintek play before, and he knows she's getting excited. Here with Margaret, she's very competitive, so. That I am. <laughs> this is hand games. <laughs> we play. The 2019 Family Reunion Festival Hand Games winners were a family team from Kansas comprised of Potawatomi Leadership Program alumni, veterans, and others. Mary Frances Reiner, Alexis Reiner, Joan Atkins, Linda Miller, Samantha Witchman, Joe Wolfkohl, and Anthony Wolfkohl. The auction and donations reached a total of nearly $2,500. The next competition comes in June 2020. When people think of Native American drumming, a picture of a group of men sitting around a large drum two to three feet in diameter comes to mind. Tradition allows only men to play these drums, whether it's at a powwow, ceremony, or social gathering. However, tradition also encourages women to play smaller hand drums, roughly a foot in diameter or less, either on their own or as part of a larger group with the men. Every week, a group of citizen Potawatomi Nation women gathers to practice. Drumming is considered the heartbeat of Sukmakwe or Mother Earth. As one of the founders of the tribal women's drum group, Dwegan Kwek, Jane Fleischfresser feels that connection through the music and language. When you're drumming, you can just feel that heartbeat and it just kind of, I don't know if transcend would be the word, but it just puts you in a good state. Nearly a decade ago, the group started as a talking circle, a safe space where participants speak for themselves uninterrupted as turns move clockwise around the circle. During a trip to CPN's homeland, 
Cultural Heritage Center Director Kelly Mosteller was gifted songs from other Ojibwe and Potawatomi living in the Great Lakes region. She then gifted them to Fleischfresser and the rest of the group. It was kind of a little intimidating because, you know, it's stuff you don't know about and then, then you're not sure about pronouncing some of the words. And, uh, but just over time, we kind of got past that, and um, my sister Zarina, she'll, uh, she'll find some songs for us to do, and then so we'll just work on them for a while, and then until we get them down, and then if we're lucky enough to be able to perform them, then we perform them. <laughs> the members range from long-timers like Fleischfresser to those who started drumming less than two weeks ago. Although it's tribal member Pam Vrooman's second practice, she already feels a sense of community. Uh, women are, are very connected, and I think we bring that connection into the drumming, and um, it's a different sort of drumming than the men do. Um, and I like the, the fellowship. I like the, the learning. There are stories swapped and um, little nuances of things that you didn't know before that you suddenly are, are part of, and that's a pretty incredible feeling. Donna Bernard began performing with the group five years ago after she happened to see a Facebook post about it. She thinks Dewegan Quek's existence makes it unique. There's a lot of tribes that don't have a women's drum group and if you go to any powwows or events uh, a lot of times you'll see the big drum and you don't always know that there might be some other drummers that drum on the small drums. So uh, I can tell that all the people in our drum group really enjoy what they're doing, and uh, it gives us a real sense of pride in our Potawatomi heritage. As the women sat in a circle at practice, they talked about their drums and rattles. Many of the women made their own as they got more comfortable playing. CPN Department of Education Director Tasha Zintek told the person next to her about her instruments. Her drum has an image of a crane representative of her Potawatomi name, Jajakwe, or like a crane. So this is cedar from my grandma's uh, allotment, uh -huh. and then crane, because uh -huh. like a crane, and then I glued it together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bernard makes sure hers are one of a kind, crafting them at different events, such as the annual Potawatomi gathering. At practice, she played one adorned with a turtle. Native Americans often refer to North America as Turtle Island. In the first fire of the Seven Fires Prophecy, the Anishinaabe people followed direction from creator's Miga shell to Turtle Island and the land where food grows on water. Above the picture, she painted Bodewadme, or Potawatomi, in Ojibwe. I have three now. Since I am an artist, I enjoy painting them also. So uh, we decorate them with uh, native designs. I painted two with eagles on them. More of a silhouette, but, uh, and then I painted uh, some feathers on a couple more, and then a traditional Potawatomi design on the other one. Over the years, many institutions and organizations have asked Dueg and Quek to perform at functions and ceremonies once they discovered the group. That includes the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa and several educational facilities. However, Flies Fresher holds time with the CPN Veterans Organization close to her heart. When the veterans do their Christmas party, they always ask us to sing, and now we feel like we're part of their family because, you know, we're, and they'll feed us and they, they include us in everything. And uh, so that's very, very honored to be a part of that. The women play both social and ceremonial songs at events, whichever is appropriate. As a new member, Roman already looks forward to passing on what she learns at practice. Uh, the other day I was sitting in a restaurant with my granddaughter, who's four, and I've been playing a lot of the drum songs in my car as we travel and exposing them to her. And she was singing the humble song. 
And I loved that. It just did crazy things to my heart, you know. And I, I love the idea that that's going to be part of who she is growing up. Um, I can't wait till she's old enough to bring her. <laughs> Fleischfresher learned about Potawatomi culture as an adult. However, she wishes she could have been connected during her youth. She appreciates the bond the women have now and says they laugh and cry together. We're just like a little family and sometimes we don't always see each other but once a week. So we'll we'll practice but a lot of times uh, sometimes we'll just kind of, you know, see what everybody's been doing for the week and then get ca caught up on that. Um, but yeah, we're, I mean, we take ourselves serious, but not so serious that we can't have a good time. Bernard finds practice fun as well. She describes herself as, quote, not a musician, but continued playing. She doesn't think apprehensions should stop anyone else either. It's not so difficult that you couldn't, can't learn a song even in the first session. Try it out and you'll probably like it. Duwakin Kwek meets Thursdays at 5 p.m. in the CPN Cultural Heritage Center Long Room. They invite anyone who wishes to drum or sit in on a session to attend. Extra drums and rattles are available to borrow during practice. Designed to shape the next generation of citizen Potawatomi Nation leaders that live around the world, the Potawatomi Leadership Program welcomes 10 students to spend six weeks during the summer experiencing the tribe and Native American customs. This year's PLP class stretches from coast to coast. The participants attend colleges from Florida to Washington. The 2019 PLP participants' career goals ranged from sports journalist to surgeon, and their personalities varied just as widely. During the crash course internship, they learned a substantial amount about Potawatomi culture and tribal enterprises, as well as leadership skills born from being indigenous. Many of them connected with a previously undiscovered part of their heritage, including Spokane Falls Community College freshman Liam Rickson. Like a lot of times, I almost felt bad for checking, you know, the Native American box and forms and stuff. Um, even though I was already a, you know, a member of the tribe, I sort of didn't feel like I was truly a member. And it's not always about, you know, blood percentage. It's about how willing you are to be involved in the culture, in the tribe. Some of the most meaningful and artistic experiences included helping make their regalia. Shawls hold prominence as a part of women's regalia, and each of the women in the PLP class received one from their house mother, Margaret Zentek. For University of Northern Iowa sophomore Jacqueline Minchner, giving her input on colors and fabrics and learning to fringe was special. Mine is black, red, and white, and I chose red because I'm the second born, which is has meaning to me, and then we have feathers. I have a white and red feather crossing at the ends, which is beautiful, and Margaret did an amazing job. The group created pucker toe moccasins during a family reunion festival class in June. They also learned traditional powwow dances, which was Fort Lewis College sophomore Katie Simpson's favorite part. I, I felt very like powerful. It felt moving almost. And that, it inspired me to want to come back next year and do competitive dancing. I, just, I think it's just so beautiful. I can't get enough of it. The shawls, dancing, moccasins, and more all came together during grand entry. Much of the PLP class enjoyed seeing everyone participating and their handmade pieces, including Haskell Indian Nations University sophomore Maria Rencher. It was just a really um, like immersive like experience, um, and I felt like like connected with the people around me and getting to see like their regalia and like outward expression. In addition to cultural teachings, they met with each CPN department and enterprise throughout their time at the tribe. They studied how the nation functions on a day-to-day -day level and gained an understanding of CPN's overarching relationships with other governments. The diversity of the nation's services and businesses surprised Lily Lewis, a sophomore at the University of Texas at Dallas. 
just seeing how like much the tribe is constantly developing and creating new things and just really thinking ahead and being proactive is really cool. Mentioner particularly enjoyed visiting the realty department. They took us to uh, the clay shooting range and we all got to participate in that and it was a fun day overall going and seeing where things are that the Potawatomi owns that you don't necessarily see um, besides like the main powwow area. Traveling around the tribe and seeing how hard all of the employees work made Lewis realize everyone contributes their portion to keeping things running smoothly, including the public information department. You know, you see a flyer, but you don't think about all the work that goes in behind it and suddenly realizing that there's a voice behind like the social media that we see, each Twitter page, like each post has to be made by someone and all the work that goes into it is really impressive. They also quickly learned communication is critical to leadership. With 10 people living in one house, they developed various ways to speak and present themselves as they moved together between social situations, work, and ceremonies. University of Central Oklahoma sophomore Mickey Loveless now feels more well-rounded for professional interactions. I feel like going through this um, program, it helps prepare me for to be able to work with people who I just met so that I can be a better uh, partner, team member, and also be able to develop myself and my identity so that I can be there for those people. Using those skills and adapting them to any workplace remains a lifelong lesson from the program. Florida State University sophomore Keisha Perkins now knows how to bring her ideas forward and make her voice heard. I've learned to at least step up uh, and not be like a follower, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, you learn that it's not always something that you can just tag along, like you've got to make your own decisions. You've got to be able to think about something that can be impactful and um, big. Others grew by allowing their peers to speak and not always taking charge. Allie Smith, a California Lutheran University sophomore, found traditional talking circles a unique experience. You're all supposed to stay silent and just let one person talk, where when you're a bit in a big group, um, like usually people are talking over each other or things like that. So I just really like how we can all just like sit for a minute and listen to each other, like fully listen. Drury University freshman Jonathan Toon discovered that, to him, leadership means teaching others and answering their questions. His plans following his six weeks with CPN included spreading his new knowledge at home. My college doesn't have an American Indian Student Association, so that's something I actually want to look forward into starting or, you know, getting involved in at my school. The PLP-influenced University of North Texas sophomore Rachel Sanders to an incalculable degree, preparing her for school, career, and life. I probably won't even understand until I get back is the true answer because there are so many things that we've learned and developed and like understanding ourselves makes us better for the future. As a whole, the group learned the basics of self-governance and the tribe's standing as a business entity and government, complete with three branches reflective of the U.S. federal system. They also dove into the Potawatomi language with Justin Neely, the language department director. Several expressed a desire to pass it along to their friends and family after returning from the program. The CPN Department of Education accepts applications for the Potawatomi Leadership Program at the beginning of each calendar year. To learn more about the program and apply, visit plp.potawatomi.org. Hanukkah Podcast is produced and brought to you by Citizen Potawatomi Nation's Public Information Department. Our director is Jennifer Bell. Don't forget to subscribe to us on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you find what you listen to. We're also on Facebook at Citizen Potawatomi Nation and on Twitter at C underscore P underscore N. Visit us on the web and find digital editions of the tribal newspaper at Potawatomi.org. That's P-O-T-A-W-A-T-O-M-I dot org. Until next time, I'm Paige Willett. Miigwech Nikanek, Bamamina. Thank you, friends. See you later.